Hi, this is Eric White. This is the third in a series of screencasts on getting started with OpenXML. In this screencast, I'm going to talk about the word processing ML scenarios that you will commonly use OpenXML for. By scenarios, I mean the variety of application types where OpenXML can be a key component in the implementation of that particular type of application. 95% of all scenarios in OpenXML development can be divided into one of six categories. There are three primary scenarios for word processing ML. There are two primary scenarios for spreadsheet ML and primarily there's only one scenario for presentation ML. I'm not saying that there are not other uses of OpenXML because there certainly are, but 95% of all OpenXML applications fit into one of these six categories. Let's talk about word processing ML first. Since word processing ML is the most used of the various markup languages, the first and most important scenario in word processing ML is document generation. Prior to OpenXML, developers often accomplished document generation by automating Word. Sometimes developers automated Word in server-side scenarios. There are technical challenges associated with automating Word in server-side scenarios. I've heard of customers who had a server room full of computers running VBA code to generate documents. But there are problems with automating Word in this scenario. If there is any problem, then Word may put up a modal dialog box, and you have no way to prevent Word from putting up such a modal dialog box from VBA or from a Visual Studio Tools for Office application that uses C Sharp or VB.NET to access the primary interop assemblies. I've heard of customers who had an employee sit in the room watching various computers run their automation tasks so that if and when there were any problems associated with running those automation tasks, then the employee could stop the automation task, restart it, fix the problem, or what have you. It's interesting to read this knowledge base article around the issues associated with automating Office on the server. In contrast, doing document generation using OpenXML can be completely robust. The reason is that the only thing that's absolutely required to do OpenXML document generation is some kind of a library to work with zip files and some kind of a library to work with XML within those zip files. These are the types of libraries that servers are made of. There are rock-solid libraries both for handling zip files and for handling XML. Therefore, you can write document generation applications that can generate hundreds of thousands of documents with a completely predictable performance profile. The OpenXML SDK 2.0 was optimized for server-side scenarios. The engineers at Microsoft made sure that the SDK had predictable CPU and memory usage. One interesting approach to generating OpenXML word processing ML documents is presented on my blog at ericwhite.com. In this approach, you start with a template document. This template document has content controls in it. In those content controls, you put XPath expressions that specify where the data comes from that will replace those content controls. You also have as an input to this process an XML document that contains data that you are going to use to control the document generation process. In this particular case, there's an XML file that has a customer's root element. Underneath that root element, there are various customer elements. Underneath each customer element, there are orders. The template document and the XML data document are fed to the document generation process, which then generates multiple 
word processing ML documents. In the example program that I present in that blog post series, one of the examples is an example that generates a lot of sample data. I needed to generate a fair amount of random sample data so that I could see how this approach performed at scale. As delivered, this example program generate data generates an XML file with appropriate data in it. This XML file has 3,000 customers in it and it has up to three line items in each order. First step is to compile and run the program that generates the sample data. We'll close that project. Let's take a quick look at the template document. One thing that makes it easier to look at content controls is to put Word into design mode. To do this, you click on the developer tab and then you click on this button design mode and it then changes the appearance of content controls so that it has these start and end markers around each content control. Now let's open the document generator solution and let's run the example. This solution is generating a hundred documents every single time it outputs one of these numbers. In this particular case, I haven't done anything to particularly optimize this. I've gotten far greater performance, for instance, by running this example on a solid state drive. That can always help. But as you can see, this example generated 3,000 documents in a very short amount of time. And here we can see all of the generated documents. If I look at one of these generated documents, I can see the data that was inserted into this generated document. You can find the blog post series here. Another approach is to use the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. The productivity tool can take any OpenXML document and generate the appropriate OpenXML SDK code to generate that specific document. Having generated that code, it then is often a very straightforward process to go into that code and modify the code so that it uses some data source to generate multiple documents and to customize the generation of each one of those documents. I covered the OpenXML SDK 2.0 productivity tool in part two of this series around getting started with OpenXML development. Another tool that many developers find useful is the Document Builder class that is part of the Power Tools for OpenXML project. The Document Builder class enables you to grab pieces and parts of various OpenXML word processing ML documents and assemble them into a single document. Sometimes developers take an approach along the lines of generating small documents for each part of the composite document that they want to create and then they use Document Builder to assemble all of those pieces into a complete document. At openxmldeveloper.org there is a Document Builder Resource Center. You can find that here. There are a number of links to videos and articles in this resource center. If you're going to use Document Builder it's important to come here and explore all of this content. Another important resource if you need to do docx generation is the content list at openxmldeveloper.org. If you come to the front page of openxmldeveloper.org and scroll down to the bottom of it, you'll find this link to the OpenXML Developer Wiki. If you click on that link, it will take you to this table of contents for the OpenXML Developer Wiki. And if we look at the OpenXML content by keyword, we'll find links to OpenXML content all around the web on lots of different sites. If we click on docx generation, we'll find a large number of links to content, videos, articles, and so on about generation of 
OpenXML word processing ML documents. The next important scenario around word processing ML is data and content extraction. There are a couple of interesting scenarios here. One is where you as a developer design a document that you send out to a number of users as a form. These users then fill in the form with the data appropriate to their particular situation. It might be an application for an insurance policy. It might be a survey for a club or organization that you belong to. Then after all of the users have filled in their word processing document, they send it back to you. You then can write an OpenXML program to extract that data from that word processing form and store that data into a database. Another interesting scenario around extracting content from an OpenXML word processing ML document is that of validating code in word processing documents. Technical authors often write large documents that contain a lot of code. They may be writing this documentation or writing their book around a library that is changing underneath them. Maybe the library is under development as they speak. In any case, one of the last steps that many technical authors encounter is that of going through the entire book or going through their article and manually testing each and every snippet of code before they send it to the publishers. At least good technical authors do this. It's very frustrating to come across a code snippet in a book that doesn't compile or doesn't work as advertised. One approach is to put content controls in a word processing document and then put the actual code inside of those content controls and then have a system that extracts that code, compiles the code, runs the code, and then compares the output of the code to the output that is listed in their word processing document. To make this clear, I'm going to turn on design mode here we can see that there are content controls around the code here. There is some configuration information up here that tells what the ID of this particular test is. It also specifies an output ID. This 0001 out corresponds to this content control with a tag of 0001 out. When the automated testing system extracts this snippet and runs it, the expected output is this. When you run this example, it opens up those word processing documents, extracts all of those tests, runs all of the tests, collects the output, and then produces a report about the status of each one of those tests. At the beginning of this report, we can see that there were seven tests with 24 snippets and every one of the tests passed. The third common scenario around word processing ML is that of document transformation. A common need of developers is to transform word processing ML to HTML and then display that HTML in a browser or in a control that can display HTML. There are a variety of approaches that you can take to convert word processing ML to HTML. As part of the Power Tools for OpenXML project, I wrote a transform from word processing ML to HTML. It's a pure functional transform written in C sharp. Here's a word processing document. I'll open the word processing document. You can see it has an image in it, a hyperlink in it, a table, text styled with various styles, and bulleted and numbered lists. We'll run the Power Tools for OpenXML example that will convert that to HTML, and then open up the HTML. And you can see the image, the hyperlink, the table, and so on. Another approach is to use an XSLT style sheet. This is the approach that the OpenXML document viewer takes. The OpenXML document viewer is an open source project on CodePlex. 
you can download the OpenXML viewer source code here. I've encountered several large companies that needed to build their own custom transformations of word processing ML to either some specialized dialect of XML or to some specialized form of HTML. One company was a large media outlet that required their authors to write their content in Word and then they would do a very specialized transform of word processing ML to a dialect of XML that they would then transform further into various forms of HTML to be published on the web. In another case there was a large software company that required technical writers to write in Word there was then a fairly elaborate transform of that word processing ML to very specialized HTML for display on the web. So in this video I've covered the three main scenarios around word processing ML. There are other scenarios but you will find that 95 percent of all scenarios fit into one of these three categories. In the next video I'm going to cover the various scenarios around spreadsheet ML and presentation ML.